today, there are at least 1 million unique miners for Bitcoin alone, not to mention all the other cryptocurrencies in existence. But how is all of this happening? What role is the miner playing? And how might this change the landscape of computing in the future? First, let's go over some background to make sense of the crypto mining landscape. Going back to January 3rd, 2009, that's when the first Bitcoin mining operation went underway. And a 50 Bitcoin reward was sent to this address. Although unconfirmed, it most likely went to the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor of Bitcoin. While no official transactions were recorded in the Genesis block, the embedded text, The Times, January 3rd, 2009, Chancellor on Brink of Second Bailout for Banks, was a nod to the financial crisis of the time and a major motivator behind the decentralized currency's inception. Fast forward to August 2021, and those 50 Bitcoins would collect you over 1.5 million US dollars. However, due to either a quirk in the system or an intentional implementation in the code, the first 50 Bitcoins can't be spent. Instead, the first mining operation launched what would become global recognition of Satoshi Nakamoto's vision of a decentralized currency and become a financial and technical force to be reckoned with. Miners are typically in the news for the wrong reasons. Expending terawatt hours of energy for mining purposes, gulping up GPUs on launch day, and introducing novel, yet somewhat controversial, digital use cases such as CryptoKitties and NFTs. Before diving into the details of cryptocurrency mining, it is worth understanding Satoshi's original vision and the use of the blockchain to address a set of very specific technical problems. Satoshi's Vision According to the original white paper, Bitcoin is a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash, aimed directly at modern financial institutions, which act as middlemen for financial transactions. The primary issue regarding modern financial institutions, according to Satoshi Nakamoto, is the inherent trust required for all transactions. This trust could potentially lead to unidentifiable fraud by the middlemen, incur a high cost of mediation between customers, or involve complexity even with small, casual transactions as common as a wire transfer. To address these issues, Satoshi described a distributed, i.e. not centralized, electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust. Such a scheme, he argued, would make financial transactions immutable and computationally impractical to reverse and help protect against fraud. All this while also getting rid of the need for a trusted third party during transactions. While great in theory, there was one minor technical challenge that needed ironing out. Namely, in a public ledger, anyone could claim a transaction even without the necessary funds. Who is there to arbitrate and assert that all transactions being performed are backed up by the appropriate amount of funds? For example, if Alice has $100 at the beginning of the day, she could promise Bob, Charlie, and David independently that she'd send them each $100 by the end of the day. While Alice could show them that she owns $100 and they'd all be content and agree to the transaction, Alice only has $100. Thus, if at the end of the day, the public ledger, which once finalized is set in stone, so to speak, includes three transactions initiated by Alice for $100, the system would be broken and no one would want to use it. With a centralized system such as in modern day banks, there would exist a single ledger that can validate how much money a certain individual has, and thus it can guarantee that the customer cannot spend more than they own. When talking about a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system, however, who is there to stop a clever individual from spending their money multiple times quickly before getting caught? To address this potential issue, crypto miners enter the playing field. Essentially, miners play the role of the decentralized banker and will perform the required grunt work to ensure that the system is functioning as expected without double spending. In return for their work, they will be rewarded with some cryptocurrency. For Bitcoin specifically, miners originally competed for a 50 Bitcoin reward approximately every 10 minutes. Today, that reward has seen three halvings, which reduced the reward from 50 Bitcoins down to 6.25 Bitcoins. The next halving event is expected for 2024, and miners will continue to experience halving events until all 21 million Bitcoins are mined, expected to be around 2040. As Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum puts it, the motivation behind halving events is to keep inflation under control. Once all Bitcoins, or any cryptocurrency are mined, the network will continue to run on transaction fees. But why does all of this complexity even exist? Double spending, cryptographic proof of trust, halvings, a limited supply of crypto coins, an immutable ledger, and a distributed blockchain. This all goes back to Satoshi's original paper. 
which aimed to create an electronic cash system with proper checks and balances, while moving financial power from centralized forces to the distributed masses. Whether that vision has been accomplished or hijacked is still up for debate. Let's take a technical deep dive into the inner workings of what computation miners are doing, whether knowingly or inadvertently, to enable the cryptocurrency revolution. Bringing the crypto into cryptocurrency. The original Bitcoin paper did not mention the word GPU at all. In fact, it focused entirely on CPUs as the go-to hardware for miners. Now, even GPUs might be outdated, as hardcore miners probably need FPGAs or ASICs to be competitive and strike gold to win the mining reward. What is the major difference between these different architectures and the context of cryptocurrency mining? The answer, a high level of parallelism for the specific task of solving a difficult math problem. The job of the miner is twofold. Number one, to validate data blocks and add transactions to the blockchain. Only one miner can actually perform this operation at a time and add a new block. Thus, in order to have the honor of arranging the next block of transactions, the miner must, number two, be the first to find the correct 64 digit hexadecimal number, a hash, that completes a numeric problem. The good news for the miner is that the math problem is actually not that difficult. The goal is to find the right number called a nonce, which when plugged into a cryptographic function will produce a number that is less than a defined value. The bad news is that identifying the correct nonce is practically guesswork, since it is a cryptographic function after all. What miners are essentially doing with their massive computational processors and lots of electricity is guessing many nonces in parallel. However, the nonce itself is just a means to an end. What the miner is really after is the correct hash value that is computed as a result of the correct nonce. To understand the computational complexity of this cryptographic function, you can check out a calculator to compute the SHA-256 hash of an arbitrary message. Now, imagine the message is a summary of multiple transactions, such as Alice sent Bob $100 and the nonce. The challenge is to identify the correct nonce, which when included as part of the message will produce an output with 19 leading zeros. You'll notice that while playing with this calculator, that this is practically random and will require an extremely large number of guesses to land any set of leading zeros, let alone at least 19. At a high level, by changing the number of leading zeros, you can increase the difficulty involved with mining the block, and hence keep the target of 10 minutes per block in check, especially as more miners enter the field. This system of mining is typically called a proof of work. Other systems include proof of stake, which changes the role of the miner to be proportional to the number of coins held. But that's a topic for another video. The cryptographic algorithm is at the core of the cryptocurrency. SHA-256 isn't the only mining algorithm used for cryptocurrencies either, as other cryptocurrencies aim to use algorithms that are more ASIC resistant. The Mining Landscape Philosophical and Technical Differences Although Bitcoin started the mining craze of the 21st century, Today we find more than 4,500 different types of cryptocurrencies in the wild. Since it is relatively easy to create a new cryptocurrency, many are indeed scams and it is critical to do your research before either buying or mining a coin. But why are there so many cryptocurrencies in the first place? Behind every new coin is a developer, or multiple developers, and this can lead to different personal or financial agendas. For example, many crypto coins came to the surface after ASICs entered the mining field in order to return the distributed nature of the blockchain to the masses. Others, like Litecoin, differ very little from previous coins, and it was created to decrease the block generation time to about 2.5 minutes, in order to make it more liquid for transactions. As the crypto community grew, so did opinions on what the ideal cryptocurrency should be. When 19-year-old Vitalik Buterin couldn't convince Bitcoin developers to adopt a programmable cryptocurrency into the blockchain, he set about making his own. Now, the Ethereum network is the second largest cryptocurrency by market size and has added a valuable blockchain feature called smart contracts. Later, Fabian Vogelsteller, an Ethereum developer, created the ERC-20 standard, allowing practically anyone to make a cryptocurrency token which runs on top of the Ethereum blockchain. This had other consequences, but again, that goes beyond what we want to explain here. Should you be a miner? Before diving into the mining world, there are many questions you ought to ask yourself. It might be quite expensive to even get into the game at this point, 
and even if you have a spare GPU lying around, other questions such as electricity costs can come into play. Mining is an extremely computationally expensive process, but practically max out any CPU or GPU. There are also cryptocurrency choices to make. Bitcoin, for example, is very hard to mine as an individual today due to the widespread use of ASIC miners. Other coins such as Ethereum and Monero might only be profitable if joining a pool of miners. The result is a shared profit, which is more likely to occur given the combined hashing rate of a mining pool. To make a decision, you should consider many of the following and perhaps use a calculator. The last two are often the most variable and are the hardest to predict. Then again, if profit is secondary and you are a believer in Satoshi's vision of a truly distributed peer-to-peer -peer cash system, perhaps identifying the right coin and mining it is your calling. Regardless, it always makes sense to understand the technical details and differences of the cryptocurrencies in order to make an informed judgment of the currency being invested in. Thank you for watching this video explainer about crypto mining. If you want to see more videos like this, you know how this YouTube thing works. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when new videos drop. For more tech news, gaming, and analysis, head on over to techspot.com.